I know it's been a while since we've done one of these, but we are back with another coaching video here in the channel. In case you missed out on it, a few months back I made some videos going through some coaching things, watching some gameplay, breaking them down live from other people. And today we are back with another one of these little sessions. And what I did was I watched this gameplay live, broke down some of the things, mostly hitting wise, that I think this person could improve upon. As you play the game more and more, you start to get better with the PCI placement. You get swing timings down, reading the edges of the zone. But the thing that really keeps people from going to the next level is just that patience with swinging and choosing the right pitches to commit to. So a part of this video today, we talked about a lot was breaking that down and helping you guys find those pitches you should be attacking mentally telling yourself to take other pitches and working pitch counts a little more than people do my dude z stone was the person to send us his gameplay today so i want to make it clear i'm using this as an avenue to break down gameplay and give advice and tips to help people get better i'm not out here trying to roast and toast someone for the sake of it i'm gonna leave z stone's socials in the description below if you want to check him out dude is an absolute legend to let me break down his gameplay today and give him some tips if you guys want to see more of this let me know in the comment section if you want to be potentially broken down and coached like this type of thing in the future let me know and maybe if you swing by the twitch stream we'll do that one day again you could send me some gameplay of yours and we'll make some of this work out just like we did with my dude z stone but without further ado let's hop right into the session and go through all the hitting approaches and strategy you should be having if you're trying to get better as a hitter let's get into it so we're gonna kind of break down and give some tips in terms of the strategy things he could be doing um things that he could change with his gameplay to try to improve that so yeah let's just look at his lineup first so he has tatis at third griffey in left mookie third in right field jimmy a catcher mickey cattell freddie and trey he could get get what trey's goal defense at short I don't know if Cattell has gold in his secondaries. I feel like he would get more value here. Sliding Trey to like third base. Playing Tatis in his primary with his diamond defense. I feel like that would be more valuable than having Nando at third. And having him at a secondary too. I feel like this 3-4 could be improved a bit. Mookie third, Jimmy four. I feel like three spot could be, that three spot could be saved for a Griffey. And then you throw one of those switch hitters in the two spot. And then you have Jimmy four and then it's like Mickey fifth. The, I think the, the lineup could be spaced a little more. The two righties in a row here and the two potentially righties in a row here is going to make the bullpen decisions against you a little easier. So for me, just like I would try to balance it out. But I assume there's a reason he does well with everyone. So I'm not going to hundred percent. So yeah, he has, he's facing Charlie Morton, who is one of those pitchers that doesn't have the most velo. That four seam is a little faster than people expect, but really he's got a great slurve. The four seam does have some velo on it. I think it's going to be a good test to see what his timing is with fastballs and sinkers and all that a lot of it i feel like people struggling to hit fastballs it's kind of really guessing what pitch you're gonna get and committing enough to the fastball he threw a breaking ball away first pitch that just screams that he's gonna come back with a fastball right after inside yeah what is this thing in center field what is that i feel like this dude's gonna attack him a lot with those fastballs inside and you got to mentally be prepared to time it. Timing up fastballs is a mentality thing. Being prepared for that pitch and know, like, knowing that if that you're going to see a pitch in that zone that looks like a fastball, you're, you're mentally prepared to time that. And then if you see a breaking ball, then you slow down and adjust. That seemed like he overcommitted to a fastball. Nothing, nothing. No reason to swing a down away fastball. It's not going to be an easy pitch to hit. Um, this guy likes to attack him away to start off the at bat. And probably work his way inside. Wouldn't be shocked if he goes back inside here. Oh, did it with a changeup. That's a weird pitch choice. Perfect, perfect. That's a great swing. Oh, a cutter, not a... So he did go with a cutter. Tried to freeze him on it. That's a good swing. So he just said that down in sinker gets him a lot. That's a pitch that he struggles with. Which is, it's a good pitch to throw because you're trying to get them to commit to an inside fastball and then expand on the sinker outside his own. Um, And really, the only way you ever hit that pitch is if you are dialed up enough for that sinker that you can be on the earlier side of it and that you could pull it somehow. Um, you being slightly late on that always kills you on that down and in sinker off the plate. That's a good swing. That's a beauty of an at-bat right there. So I kind of just want to break that down quickly, what he did right there. That's a beauty of an at-bat. So trying to see if you can get a gauge of how his opponent approached him, this at-bat. So did that first pitch inside sinker, 
Caught him a little aggressive with that fastball. It seems like he's struggling how committed he wants to be to a fastball. So his opponent tests him, throws it away, and he makes a good adjustment and takes that cutter. That's a great read right there. Inside outside is a common routine for you to go back and forth to. Thinking away here, and when you throw a couple pitches in a row on one side of the plate, you kind of just got to be mentally waiting, when is he going to throw me inside? And his opponent makes a mistake. He goes away again. And he was committed to that. He missed that. That's an unfortunate miss. And when he finally comes inside, he's ready for it and throws a slurve. He has enough time to read that it's inside and time it up. What he should have done his opponent, throw a fastball. Throw that fastball inside. That's a, not a good pitch to throw. You're trying to fight these fastballs. You try to try to get an idea of how your opponent is throwing those fastballs to you. How are they approaching? And his opponent is spamming cutters inside, outside. He's going back and forth. It's a cycle. You got to try to pick up on the routine and the patterns and how he's throwing them. Um, he's starting to pick up on it a bit as the game goes. The best pitch you're going to get to hit, and in terms of trying to give yourself the most success, you need to be telling yourself to be ready for an inside fastball, whether it's a cutter or a sinker. Whether he tries to throw a sinker and dot it on the corner, or throw a cutter off the plate. Those are the two pitches you got to be ready for. So me, I'm eyeing inside. I'm telling myself to only swing if I see that ball release out of his hands start to come enough to the right. Even if you overcommit to that cutter a little bit off the plate and you're early on it and you're committed to it, you're just going to hit a foul ball. No harm found. You could catch yourself a cutter that catches a plate and crush it. And same with that sinker. If you are mentally ready to time that pitch and you get the timing down, you're early on it. It's not going to induce an out when you're throwing a pitch inside like 90% of the time. The only time deals pitches become tough is when you're not ready for it. You're hesitant and you hit like late weak outs. So here, I'm mentally dialed up for an inside fastball. Here, you got an inside cutter. Hmm, would have thought about that. So now, he went an inside cutter off the plate. What a lot of people like to predict now, he's going to come back inside, throw a sinker move that moves the opposite direction, make him think that it's a cutter, try to tunnel that. It would be very logical to see an inside sinker in the zone since he fell behind the count here. He threw it away this time. So his opponent isn't really trying to tunnel that much. I'm getting the vibe that if you throw one thing inside, he's instantly shifting outside. So now you gotta start taking note of the patterns, how he's approaching him. Like, his opponent isn't trying to 100% tunnel one pitch after another. I bet he goes away here. Oh, wow, he doubled down, okay. But see, he's throwing pitches not even close to the zone. He's doing a good job of laying those off right now. There's the away pitch I was talking about, this one pitch later. Now you have a 3-2 count. He's thrown two strikes away. That's when he's trying to get me over pitch. Throw a, a backdoor cutter. I wouldn't be shocked if he goes away again and tries to make him prove he can hit an away pitch. Probably either go away with like an over the plate fastball or throw another one of those slurves down and in or cutters off the plate. He's going to go with the strategy of throw it really far off the plate and hope he expands the zone once or just get me over, make him hit the ball in a 3-2 count. Don't walk him lead off batter. And he went away sinker, trying to get that, that away part of the zone he wants to establish as the, let me throw a strike. So when he feels he needs a strike, he goes away. And yep, and now it just set him up to go back inside. So take all those things that we just mentioned that last at bat. He's throwing a lot of the, the junk inside off the plate. See, he hung that. I bet he meant to throw that away. People who are trying to get better, you got to get good at catching those mistakes and being ready to swing and all of that. And he's doing a good job of that right now. I like that he swung at that. I like how he swung at that inside cutter. He has a good gauge of what's going to be off the plate inside overall. He's not completely lost with that. And that's what you want to do. That's an unfortunate out, but that's what you want to do. Be ready to swing at those inside fastballs. And then adjust if you see an away pitch or if it's a breaking ball. You always start and prepare for the fastest swing. And then adjust to anything you notice that changes that. So you sit middle in or sit inside fastballs, slow down to those breaking balls. So you're going to pick up on them being breaking balls after, and then you have time to adjust and slow down. So very early on away slurve, you got to make that adjustment. Why would you throw that pitch twice in a row? See, like he's starting to pick up on the trend. That's a good adjustment. That's a good sign. You got to pick up on how your opponent's throwing you and his opponent's doing that. He's kind of giving away where he's throwing those pitches. Like those pitches on the right side of plate move to the right. And on the left side of the plate, they move left. 
And he's hanging that slur for example. I mean that splitter for example here and there. There he goes. That sinker on the left side of the plate. There we go. Sinker inside. Like he's gonna throw that sinker over and over on that left side. Yeah, he did it again. This guy is someone that seems to pitch in a manner where like he's not afraid to go to the same type of pitch over and over again. Oh god, and that hit him too. That's so unlucky. What if I'm what I'm mentally taking from that inning? Is like he just needs to sit back a little more on the away pitches with those righties. And his opponent's sticking to that a lot. It's either that or just an inside sinker. Also, he's throwing those splitters a, a lot and hanging them a lot. So, like, if you're ready for that inside fastball and you, the second you think it catches plate, be ready to turn on that. That'll be the way to get some success going his way. Throw that cutter now, buddy. No, oh, we went away with it. Yup. See, that's like, like if I've been saying, you kind of got to get a read how his opponent's pitching. A lot of those sinkers have been away. And with that out of the hand, you got to just hope and pray that's that sinker away. Even if not, it's a 1-1 count. It's so early in the count, you don't want to swing at that. And then when you put yourself in the two-strike count, it's... Let's see if he sticks with it. So he's gone. <laughs> All right, so this inning. A sinker and a four-seamer inside to start off both at bats versus lefties. That seems to be a pitch he wants to try to go to to get a get me over strike, so. Gotta take note of that pitch. Oh, and he came back with the cutter. Yep. You know what I think? If if I'm Z Stone, you know what I have to do? You gotta do you gotta be ready right here. Be ready for a down and in fastball first pitch. Be ready to swing at that pitch. Yeah, there's a he missed his spot there. Yep, there's the away pitch. That's a, that's a good strike. Don't want to swing at that if you're not ready for it. He's going to come back inside at some point, though. Yep. Goes back inside again there. So now, let's see. What pitches can he throw? He could double down, go inside with a slurve now, off the plate. Or come back with that, that sinker away. And I think you got to really minimize it to those two pitches. Again, sitting inside fastball, we got to be prepared for that to be a pitch off the zone. Yep, there's a slurve off the plate. Goes to the cutter and right after slurve inside. So let's see, righty up here. Start the inning. What's the first pitch? Get me over sinker. He likes to go for the few at bats he's done here. First pitch, trying to get a 1-0, -oh, I mean, an 0-1 -oh count. Trying to throw a sinker or four seam or cutter. On the down and in corner, either just on the corner or just off the plate. Oh man, that's a freaking bail. Down and in fastball. He might try to expand that zone after that particular swing, but look for down and in here. See how his opponent's kind of being repetitive? Like when you're playing, you're struggling hitting fastballs, best thing you could do, try to pick up on what your opponent is throwing you. In first pitch, like we're, I'm starting to get a gauge of it. His opponent just goes down and in. Bet he comes back with a fastball here over the zone. Yup. Now he got him to swing at something. He's going to expand that zone off the plate, either to sinker away, either to be just outside or just in the corner. And you probably don't want to swing at that in a 1 1 count. Or he's going to establish himself inside with that cutter off the plate. Now he got you to swing at that. There's the cutter. Now we threw the cutter. And I bet you his opponent either throws that sinker now that he wants a strike or throws that slurve down and off the corner to try to tunnel that. Ooh, he tried to dot that. Good take. He's going to try to get a strike over here. No one out. He doesn't want to walk him. But he's going to go to the good old, the good old fashioned sinker away. Oh, wait, he, he's, he went, this guy's ballsy. You got to just be sitting that pitch now with how often he's gone to it. Yeah, that's a good swing. Now he's just early on it. Now his opponent's going to expand the zone. Now he got him to swing at it down and in pitch. Be early on it. Cutter or slurve? Down and in right here, I'm calling it. Inside cutter. He's making the adjustments. He's doing a great job of taking more pitches, seeing a lot more pitches in the at bat. That's a no-no, though. That's a no-no. That is definitely a big no-no. He got that get me over sinker, and he actually did a good job of tunneling that. But in an 0 1 count, you still have one strike to give. You can't be committed to an away slurve that early on, especially with runners on. Like when you're hitting in this scenario, you gotta be telling yourself, 
He's trying to get me to be early and roll over the ball or be late and break a bat to get a double play. That's what this situation screams. And you can't be swinging at anything really away that's slow in an 0-1 count. And that right there, he unfortunately did. And that luckily he's got 98 speed out there. But the inning stays alive. There, are two, He could change it up, try to get the double play now with a slow breaking ball away here, like a splitter. Or he's going to throw that inside pitch. Though those cutters and four seams right on this corner. And he's trying to get him to expand that zone, get a double play here. His opponent's pitching for the double play here. There's that good old fashioned tunnel, by the way, off the plate sinker and coming, I mean, off the plate cutter, come back with that sinker. There's that away sinker. One, two count. He just went away to you. It's probably just going to throw, like, at this point, he might not be playing for a double play. You're in two strike count. Inside cutter and slurve. Yep, he's got him swinging right now. Wouldn't be shocked if he doubles down inside with the slurve now. And now that he got him to foul that off, foul that off, he's not getting him to be late on those like you wanted to get it now. He's not going to go away sinker. Oh, no, he doubled down on that. Okay. Ballsy. He's going to go to that away sinker at some point once he realizes he's not budging. Is that late side of good? Did he get that? Oh, that sucks. That's exactly right there. The difference between late side of good and early side of good. Balls destroyed the center. And that just boils down to the commitment on the inside pitch. And that's why Morton's good because he has a slow cutter, good sinker, and a fast four seam. And the mental commitment with the lefty to tell yourself constantly be ready for that inside fastball. I think that right there, he was ready for the inside fastball, those cutters. The slurves off the plate. He was ready for that inside pitch. And once he took that one, I think he mentally tried to check it off. Like, hey, he's not going to throw me that pitch. But with someone like Morton, this is why the, the approach with hitting should be with a lefty. You're sitting inside, always inside fastball. I like the steal, by the way. That's good. There's the committed inside fastball swing. Beautiful. Honestly, you know, just this is minor nitpicky things. On a play like that, when you have a close play at home and you have speed running, always be prepared to send your runner to second there. Because like 99% of the time, they just throw it straight home. This small minor thing that, you know, is a skill gap of the game. That sinker is just, he just wants you to hit, be late and hit that out. Break a bat on that. That is that that's a good adjustment. He guessed that he was gonna go away breaking ball. It's a good adjustment. Like he has a good gauge of like guessing what his opponent's doing. Just the issue is like I know you want to take that oppo, for example, but it, you gotta you kind of just gotta try to spit on that. Like you, in a, a one one count, and you know he's gonna throw you away, you gotta gamble on him trying to dot that. And with how he's attacked him, he's gone outside consistently. Get, he's picking up on how his opponent's pitching him a bit. He is. And what he's doing is he, he goes inside when he when he feels he's not tempted inside and he goes away to try to lull him to go back inside with a cutter or a sinker. And it's been a pretty consistent cycle of that, which I think is been big. So there's a B craw double. Ooh. These I assume is probably a 5,000 elevation stadium. Yeah, a little out that's a little bit of a Mickey Mouse PCI. Late inside. Oh, that's so bad. That's so bad. That needs to be an out. Oh. Yeah, there's a that fastball with the Glacies is committed inside fastball. All about trying to save save this inning. Oh, it's slow animation too. That like we were talking about early in the game. If you had parallel to Trey Turner at second with his diamond defense, Tatis at third, could tell it short. That play could have made could have been made potentially a little differently. Ew, ooh. That that's a tough one there. Uh, looking back at that, that wouldn't be the pitch I'd want to go to. But when you're in the heat of the moment and you're flustered, you know, it's tough to really put it together. But innings like this are just the worst for the morale because you're trying. Now you got to play full blown comeback mode. And now this changes your approach of the play because now you're flustered. The manual class A. The, the strategy should always be mentally ready to time up outlier level fastballs. Like you'll be able to read overall when a slider is a slider. You want to be ready for the cutter and the four seam. Two of his pitches are fastballs. You can eliminate. If you can be mentally ready for that fastball that eventually gets over the plate or over the zone, it can be something that really helps with hitting someone like him. But now, yeah, right now it's like you get a check swing against you. You have that rough inning. 
it's tough to stay dialed on in here. It really is. Games like this are tough when you deal with this. It's a constant cycle of things, you know? Yeah, I think this is that's a frustration inning there. Y you know what it is? I'm gonna explain the feeling and I'm just gonna call it. When you're in a scenario like this, it just feels like the world is crumbling. The game is gonna give you nothing. It feels like everything is against you. This happens to everyone, right? It's a tough battle. I mean, let's pick up. There's a lot of good, like, I've seen a lot of people who struggle with hitting, who look really lost at the plate, and you really don't look lost at the plate. Part of it's been, it's just all the mental side of it. <laughs> Cause I know this feeling all too well. And that inning, that inning was the difference. You know, like that's the difference for a lot of people is like when you have those frustrating innings, if you can pick it up again, you know? I mean, listen, eight hits, solid hitting game, five runs, pretty good. You, you sh there was a lot of points in game where, like I said, there's a lot of good. And sometimes you do play those people, they get bailed, you get some luck to go their way. And my mentality with it is like, if you can get confident enough with your hitting or just like, sometimes you gotta out hit the BS. That's a big thing to separate a lot of people. But I really think that you do a lot of stuff well, dude. I really think it just comes down to you just getting your strategy down at the plate, right? It's having a strategy and how you're gonna enter each at bat. Try, like you've made adjustments to your opponent, recognize what pitches they throw you. And my number one thing I wanna tell you is like fastballs are gonna be your best pitch to hit. So ideally you wanna be ready early count for fastballs and you only swing at breaking balls if they're just meatballs. They have to be oh, really like you could tell what's a, a hanging meatball of a slur of a splitter. You swung at those this game and you capitalize on mistakes. You're definitely a solid player. I think the thing to focus on is to strategize with how you're going to attack at the plate, picking up on your opponent's trend and to really trying to simplify what you're doing. I want to like make it clear none of this is meant to be like a roast or anything like that. I'm trying to provide and break down things to help people get better.